Hello and welcome back to the channel for another college TF review. Today we're taking a look at a release that I've been awaiting for a long time as a big fan of The Mandalorian, and that is the vintage collection, The Dark Trooper. And um, these guys definitely look sick, and I, I think he definitely impresses. There are a few things that I don't like about him, but overall, awesome figure. Um, I picked mine over at All Time Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below to get yours. And for more awesome, great Star Wars action figures and Transformers and all that. And we'll get into some interesting comparisons here today. As you might notice, that price tag um, on these guys is pretty steep everywhere being a deluxe set. And we'll get into some comparisons to see if it's worth picking up for your collection. So to start off, let's take a look at the box. And it looks pretty cool. Cool artwork on there. You have, you can see it comes with one of these um, cells, recharging cells. Uh, that we see in the show. Um, nice little picture here, a little bubble that shows the dark trooper flying, holding his gun, and you can see those blast effects pegged into his feet. Nice vintage counter styling. Cool action pose of him there, and you can see he comes with alternate hands, so you can get up in a punching pose. And this is just a picture showing everything that the figure comes with. And more artwork just staring you down on that side. And then, of course, he does come with instructions, just like a lot of the Vintage Cutter sets. Very cool. To have the guns in, different hands, and assembly of the box. And yes, you can, in fact, put several boxes together. And we'll get into that in a little bit. I don't actually have several figures here to do that comparison, but I think I see how it works. So that's pretty cool. Um, though my only complaint with the packaging would be the fact that you can't actually see said figure when you go to pick them up. So, you know, no bubble, but I am actually overall a fan of these deluxe class figures with the exception of the price tag. Um, so for the same price as this guy, you could also get, actually for a few dollars cheaper, you could get Hot Rod, Studio Series Hot Rod. And just, you can see in terms of overall plastic, yes, this guy comes with a recharging station thing, but you know, they both come with a gun and Hot Rod is a lot bigger and transforms and has like 10 times the joints. So, you know, it's just a matter of, I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, if you're a Mandalorian fan, I would say this is definitely a must pick up to, to purchase. Um, but if you're a, you know, Transformers and Star Wars fan, you had to choose one, I would say go with Hot Rod, um, unless you're a true diehard Mandalorian fan, which I am, so I definitely had to pick this guy up. With that being said, um, let's get into the figure himself. So first, let's just take a look at his chamber. Um, it is cool. I would have liked if these were transparent plastic because he does have some cool light piping. You can kind of see it glowing in the background there. Um, that looks really awesome. I mean, it would have been cool if these little red panels mimic that effect, but that's all right. Um, these panels are symmetric on each side. It doesn't really matter which one you put on which side. You do have these little recharging plug things. They don't actually plug into the figure, um, which is more convenient, I would say. So that's cool detail. And you do have to peg them in um, and they are kind of keyed. So they only go in one way, which is useful. You can see the other side. And I don't yet have multiple of these. I would like to get at least um, three more, but you can kind of see that the way these are designed on the side, you see this one on this side, it tabs in up here and down here. And then the other side, it clips over these parts. And that's so um, if you get another one, you just take this panel off and then of, of the other piece that you're going to attach and it should just attach in. So you have one piece that only has one wall on it and it should be able to attach it into either side. So then you could uh, mimic that wall effect which we see um, here on the, the box right in the background in the show, where there's just tons of these lined up inside of Gideon's Architan's Light Cruiser. Or his is a modified heavy Architan's Light Cruiser, I guess. <laughs> but so this is that the little charging port, cool sculpting, um, not much to it, but that is that. And you can, of course, set the figure inside and those little ports, we'll get it, we'll show that a little bit later, but the ports do like overlap, so that is pretty cool. And here is the Dark Trooper. He definitely looks pretty awesome. I really like that light piping. You can see if I block it, there, now his eyes are glowing with the light coming through. And that does look pretty cool. And I know that wasn't a feature on that special pack that came with Mando, um, Moff Gideon, and the damaged Dark Trooper, so I think that actually is a pretty cool upgrade. And you do see, you can see that little red piping there, um, which has long been a feature on lots of Transformers. And I do actually, I like it a lot on robots in general. So I think it's a cool, cool touch. And this guy is just packed with details. Let's take off his gun. Take a look at that. Oops. 
Very nice blaster, not your standard Star Trooper blaster. It is a Dark Trooper blaster. Looks pretty cool. Pretty cool detail. No paint on it, just too bad. I think for a deluxe set, they should have done like some sort of like little scuffing or something on the end. Um, and that does tab into his thigh here. You can see there's a little slot there and there's the peg and it does slot in very easily, very securely. And it is a fairly flexible plastic, so it is pretty durable. Um, so you can still like get him kicking and don't have to worry about it like popping off or anything. So that is a nice accessory. And of course, let's take a look now. It's Dark Trooper, it knows all his glory without his weapon. It's still quite a formidable enemy without a weapon as we see in season two. And maybe season three, I have yet to watch it. So we will see, but very cool. Nice red dots there. Overall, he doesn't have that much paint. He's got some silver. Looks pretty good. A little bit splotchy in my opinion, but pretty good. Um, especially for how little of it there is, but overall looks cool. And it's all painted in the right areas. You can see even the, the as per typical Star Wars fashion, he has asymmetric leg design where one leg looks like it has some ammo packs on it for some weapon, or maybe the bombs or something and the other leg does not, but I think that looks pretty cool. And then I really like his abdominal detailing all those pistons in there and it does look pretty cool like when you crunch him around nothing down here moves but it almost like it gives like a an illusion that he has all those mechanical components moving and the back is just as detailed as well and you kind of see even on the insides of the legs they've detailed in there too so that is a pretty nice feature now my only complaint with this guy getting him out of the packaging initially um, you know, of course, like all the vintage collection figures, his joints are really stiff. In fact, his legs were so stiff that it didn't even look like um, there was a knee bend. And it take, it still takes a good bit of effort. Um, but you can see there is, there is a knee bend there. So it, it does just take a little bit of effort and everything does work. He has lots of joints. And so let's get into articulation while we're talking about it. So at the head, he has two ball joints. So there's one at the top here, which is still very stiff, um, but it does rock side to side and it does move up and down. And then he has a lower joint down here. So you can get him looking really far down, looking down at the child maybe. And then you can also get him looking pretty far up as if he's rocketing in to action. So that's pretty cool. He does, you know, you can get him side to side and all sorts of poses. He's a very expressive robot apparently. Then we also do get shoulder articulation. You can't get the full 360 of course due to this shoulder pad, um, but it does not actually really hinder his arm movement at all. You can get it out pretty far. So that is very nice and it of course goes back and everything on this guy is kind of almost ratcheted in the way it feels uh, which is good for holding a pose but it is a little bit annoying because it does limit uh, what specific poses you can get him in um, but it still works well you got 90 at the elbow of course uh, does not go backwards i <laughs> just was curious you get full 360 out of the wrists and you also get a forward bend here and a I think there's also a little bit of a backwards bend. Yep, backwards bend as well. Same thing on the other side. And he does also come with extra hands. So you get these fists and they also have the same articulation. You can just pull out the existing hands and pop these in. I don't really want those on. I do like this look because he does have um, his trigger finger on, on this hand out of the box and then a more cupped hand, which is actually holds the rifle perfectly. And I really like that style. So I think that's the, my, in my opinion, that's a cool pose with him, you know, ready for action holding the rifle. So then he also has very nice abdominal articulation, forward crunch, back crunch, side to side, whole deal there. Very nice to see. Um, no actual like waist articulation down there, but that doesn't, I don't think he needs it. And then he can do a split to a pretty good degree here. Of course, you have some of those rubbery components in back just to help give him that room. And then he can kick forward. Okay, you know, I mean, I don't think you're really gonna get this guy sitting anywhere. So it's not that big of a deal. If you move the leg out of the way, you can get it up to about that height. And then backwards, you can go back until he hits, of course, some of that waist belt armor. And then you do get that upper thigh swivel. So that is very useful, of course, for getting his legs in more dynamic poses. Now with the legs down here, I actually have a, I, I'm not a big fan of the way they did this joint. Um, it spins at two points. So it spins at the upper, just above the knee and it spins below the knee. And I would prefer if it only did that one place. And I would think it also make the fact that this joint is so stiff. I mean, you do get a nice bend out of it, but it is so stiff. Um, and it is kind of ratcheted too. And it does go forward and backwards, just a little bit unnatural. 
Um, but I think if you spun it around, it would work in both directions. So there is that. And then the feet um, don't actually have any pivot. Like I wish they had taken the joint out from like down here and then put in a pivot joint here because there is no actual foot pivot, which is too bad, but it does go back to a really great degree and front to a nice degree. And then he does have very good ankle tiltage there. So you definitely have a lot of articulation out of this guy as you'd expect from a robot. So that is awesome. And what we see in the show, he definitely seems to be pretty formidable fighting robot. This definitely could challenge an IG droid, no problem. Got him with his blaster there. Actually, we'll leave this pegged on his side for now so that we can take a look how he looks in the chamber, the charging chamber. So you just want to sneak him in past those little ports to get him through his armpits that and then to stand them up and they should you can eventually just get them in a pose where they just rest against the, his sides there you go something like that it's pretty hard to actually see it because he's so dark um, but it is pretty cool look uh, for some other more contemporary star wars comparisons of course let's bring out mando and grogu I don't have Moff Gideon with me right now, but you can, he's about the same size as Mando, so. So here's Dark Trooper, get him standing, there we go. And Mando. Come on, Mando. All right, there we go. And Grogu. So you can see the, the Dark Trooper is a little bit taller. Um, he maybe should be a little bit taller, but I think the scaling works pretty well. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I, maybe like a 5% scale increase. I feel like he should be like maybe up here and should just be a little bit bulkier um, than Mando overall, but he definitely still looks awesome and is a fantastic addition to the collection. I'm really liking him. Um, and then also, if you just want to see a standard Stormtrooper, so you have a sense how this guy compares to Stormtrooper. There is a Stormtrooper as well. So... He's a little bit taller than a Stormtrooper. I feel like he should be a good bit taller than the Stormtrooper, um, but it still works well. It still works well. And the detailing on him is phenomenal, so definitely give Hasbro props for this release. My only complaint, again, being he's more expensive than Hot Rod. And Hot Rod also, not only is he more plastic, pretty obviously, but then is also he comes with a display like cardboard display inside of the packaging and the packaging is a lot bigger. So, I mean, even just packaging costs, Hot Rod is more expensive. Um, but, you know, for the actual price of the figure, Hot Rod is cheaper. So just something to bear in mind, but is definitely pretty awesome. And then there are two more Blast Effects that do come with this figure as well before we wrap up the review. And so they are pretty cool. I believe these are the exact same sculpts as what came with uh, the Little Deluxe Boba Fett. And those tab into, so he actually has two peg holes on his feet. He has the back one and the front one. I actually think, I'm not really sure what the purpose of the back one is because I believe they're all, unless that is actually, okay, yeah, the back one is the the stand hole. So the back, the back peg hole is the stand hole and then the more forward hole is of course for these blast effects and they do tab in pretty securely. So you can have your dark trooper flying into action to kidnap poor Grogu. So that's a, I actually, I am a fan of blast effects. They do look pretty cool. They allow for a lot more display options. Um, though I would have maybe liked to see that extra plastic gone into just making this guy a little bit bigger, but still pretty cool. Definitely recommend this figure. If you're a fan of Mandalorian, this is a must have figure for sure. Very, very awesome. Um, thank you for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and I'll catch you in the next review. See you then.